How's it going everyone? In this video, I want to go over a bunch of stuff, including Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order potentially seeing an announcement before this year's E3. This is coming from Jeff Grubb. We'll give you guys my thoughts on that. Speaking of E3, E3 2022 will be an online-only event again. Uh, you guys know what's going on in the world. I don't really need to describe that. I'll talk about that. The Ascent has been rated for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Horizon has gotten a brand new trailer. And Dead Cells, The Queen and the Sea DLC is out right now definitely something to check out if you did enjoy the original dead cells and if you didn't enjoy the original dead cells you probably haven't played it uh, played it and now would be a great time to jump into that more on that at the end of this video but first of all star wars jedi fallen order 2 likely to be revealed before this year's e3 around the may time uh, Grub noted, expect to hear about the game in a significant way before E3. Now, I've made my opinion on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order uh, pretty abundantly clear, but I seem to always focus on how much I hate the map, but the game itself I really enjoyed. I thought the combat was great, I think the visuals are stunning, I think it runs really well on the PlayStation 5. And the game is rather enjoyable. Uh, as long as they fix up the map, as long as they expand the game a little bit, I think Jedi Fallen Order 2 could be awesome. I like the combat in the first game as well. And again, visually, I thought it was a stunning game. So I would like to see a Jedi Fallen Order 2. I think Respawn showcased they could do a high-quality single-player Star Wars title with Jedi Fallen Order. And I wasn't expecting that game to be as good as it was. Because if you fundamentally and mechanically assess the game, I think they did a really, really good job with it. So hopefully they can just build upon the foundation they set with Jedi Fallen Order 1. Alright, next up, E3 2022 will be an online-only event due to ongoing health risks surrounding COVID-19 and its potential impact on the safety of exhibitors and attendees. E3 will not be held in person in 2022. We are nonetheless excited about the future of E3 and look forward to announcing more details soon. Also, uh, rather funny, the Summer Game Fest 2022 website uh, just went live as well, so a little bit of a funny coincidence that is really starting to become the major uh, the major uh, gaming event of the Summer Summer Game Fest was pretty big last year, but it'll be interesting to see how E3 turns out this year, just because E3 in general has been losing a lot of steam in recent years. It doesn't seem like it's the gaming event that gets people really excited, but hopefully it's still an event that people, you know, can get out for and still have a good time seeing what's unveiled, because I still remember some of the great E3 events of all time. I hearken back to, like, Sony's E3 conference of 2015, I remember the crowd erupting for the revelation of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think that was 2015, yeah. That was one of my favorite E3 moments of all time. And there's been some really great E3 moments, and then we've had E3 moments like the Giant Enemy Crab that have been great in their own way. I mean, I love that moment. I love the Wii music moment. There have been some memeable moments out of E3, and it's always going to be, you know, a time of the year that I get pretty excited for, but... Obviously, with the ongoings of the world, it's just a little bit different with things going on. All right, moving on from that, The Ascent by Curve Digital has been rated on the ESRB ratings board. If you guys don't know this, uh, it's a game that was on Xbox Game Pass. It was an action RPG. You can create your own character. I played the game on PC. Had a decent time with it. I thought it had an interesting story. Unfortunately, just fell off of it before I could complete the game. I played it through Xbox Game Pass, but... I did have some fun with it, and again, if it's coming to uh, if it's coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, it's something to check out. Thirty dollars is the base price. That might be a little bit expensive, but if you're a fan of top-down shooters, it's visually pretty nice. And if you like the cyberpunk setting maybe something you'll want to have on your radar. All right, moving on from that, Horizon Forbidden West has gotten a brand new trailer in the Tribes of the Forbidden West trailer. This is more of a trailer showcasing the world and specific locales, different characters, and, uh, you know, it definitely is a very, very visually impressive game. I'm going to be curious to see how this game ultimately looks on the PlayStation 5, just because, you know, it being a cross-generation title, that gets me... You know, not as excited for the potential of what it could be on the PS5, but as long as it's 60 FPS, that's mainly what I care about. And again, from a sound direction standpoint, I think the game is absolutely phenomenal. I think Horizon Loki has some of the best sound direction in a video game, and that coupled with its overall presentation elements, I think it's going to be a pretty special game. And it is my most anticipated game of February. I know some people are going to side with Elden Ring, and that's perfectly fine. But I love the narrative to Horizon. Really want to see how they develop that story and that narrative going into Horizon Forbidden West. I think there's a lot of potential with a high-quality story going forward. There are some elements I would change into the game. Um, 
you know, I wish the decision making would have a little bit more impact, but, you know, are we gonna turn this into a full-blown Mass Effect like RPG? Maybe that's not the best idea, but we'll see how Horizon Forbidden West turns out. The game is scheduled for release on February the 18th. Lastly, I do want to note, this might have taken a couple people by surprise, but Dead Cell's latest DLC, The Queen and the Sea, has officially dropped. It's $4.99, so a super cheap uh, DLC extension to Dead Cells. The game notes, infested shipwreck, fight through the uh, claustrophobic hallways of a sunken vessel while multi-legged eldritch abominations hunt you down from the shadows. Lighthouse ascend the soaring tower while fending off the relentless attacks of the Queen's Guardians and outrunning the hungry flames rising below. The crown try to get off this cursed island by lighting the beacon at the lighthouse summon however your pass won't let you go without a fight the dlc also gives you the usual extras they note nine new weapons including a throwable shark a trident and a pirate hook hand uh, a not so cute pet loads of outfits and new enemies to bash Dead Cells is an awesome game, which it does have a physical copy if you do want to get the base game physically. Uh, you can usually find it for like $15, and when it goes on sale, around the $15 to $17.49 range. Not a steep discount from its original price, but it's a game at an incredibly high level that... I think paying the base $25 is well worth the game. It's just an excellent, excellent Metroidvania action roguelite title with a great throwback art style that is so up my alley. I think the game is visually excellent. Game does have a couple of other DLC packs, uh, the Bad Seed as well as the Fatal Falls. Um, so yeah, definitely go give Dead Cells a look if you haven't played the game and maybe you'll want to check out the DLC soon. That's something that I plan on delving into relatively soon as soon as I finish a couple other ongoing playthroughs right now. But that's going to do it for me against Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2 looking to be revealed sometime before E3. Let's hope for an April or May reveal on that E3 2022. Speaking of that, that will be online only again. I don't think that's going to surprise a lot of people. The Ascent has been rated for PS4 and PS5. Solid top-down cyberpunk action RPG to look into. Um, you know, maybe that $30 price tag might be a little bit too hefty, but sometime down the line on a sale, something to check out. Horizon Forbidden West Tribes of the Forbidden West trailer has just dropped and Dead Cells getting some new DLC available right now that's gonna do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye hey guys we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed do us a favor and hit the bell icon this way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video that's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day and with the bell icon hit you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video as always thanks for watching